college football, Barrett, um, some expansion going on, 12-team playoff, a little chatter about maybe a 14-team playoff. Um, you for it or you're against it? What are your thoughts on expanding the field to, to 14 or more than 12? I absolutely hate it. I mean, I'm, oh, I'd go Barrett. back to two. Uh, but I said when they expanded to four, I was like, they're all about granting access, not rewarding excellence. And we saw that when they expanded, announced the expansion to 12. And they're flat out telling you that it's about access and money with the thought of expanding to 14. And I'm not saying like hyperbole. They literally are telling you in the stories that they want to get act, they want to favor access and money over excellence and it's sad because how do they make the money that with access um because it it makes that tv contract for the playoff a whole hell of a lot bigger because there are a whole hell of a lot more games and that's all they care about and it's sad um because now there's the idea that yeah well three sec teams could get automatic bids what the hell does a nine and three team in the sec have to do with being championship worthy it doesn't i mean it flat out doesn't and I hate it. It's sad. Um, and they, the idea of settling it on the field, I know folks have said, well, you know, it's not a beauty con. We got to settle it on the field. They don't care about settling it on the field. They care about access and they care about money. And the beauty of college football to me, and it always has been, is a regular season. I don't really care who wins the national championship. And I go back to Alabama, right? Uh, if I'm an Alabama fan, what do I take away from the season? Fourth and thirty. One or coming up short in the Rose Bowl. It's fourth and 31. If I'm an Auburn fan, what do I care about back in 2013? Losing to Florida State in the title game or the kick six? It's the kick six. Those moments matter more in college football than the national championship. And you're not going to get a lot of them because all the focus will be on bids and buys and stupid stuff like that. Barrett Salee, sir. Um, when Tennessee plays Florida at the Swamp or Tennessee plays Florida – in the stadium or Tennessee plays Alabama. Um, do you think those games will have the same intensity, the same anticipation as it did when it was BCS when there's a 12 team playoff or maybe a 14 team playoff? They'll matter to the fan bases. Sure. Right. Like they'll matter to the fan bases, but let's just say there's a dramatic moment in, in those games where, you know, the fan bases will remember it forever. If it doesn't affect the playoff, then the nation won't. It'll just be one of those regular season moments that doesn't get talked about after it happens or after the season's over. And, you know, that, that sucks. I hate it. Um, I, because those moments resonating nationally really were what made the sport great. And the foundation of all those lucrative TV contracts that these networks are signing now. And it, they're, they're being abandoned. And, you know, yeah, internally with the Tennessee fan base and Florida fan base or Alabama, like whatever happens in those rivalry games, sure, it's going to matter. You're going to remember that forever. But those will be afterthoughts from a national perspective. And unfortunately, those, those, those outlets are the ones that – that in generally speaking brought those moments into the forefront and set the foundation for what is a great sport. And I think they're ruining it. Barry, you know, we, we benefit too now, Barry, media, media guys, we, we benefit, we get more college football. We get, <laughs> we get more bigger deals, advertising. We get more deals. media gifts. Yeah. We, we, we benefit too, gifts. Barry. No, I mean, yeah, look, I, I, I know we do. I, and look, I, selfishly, yeah, I'd love to go to a, a quarterfinal, national quarterfinal, <laughs> and come back with a $70 Yeti that's branded. Like, I love those things, right? Um, but I, I love what happens in early October more than what happens in mid-January as, as a fan of this sport. So, Bear, so for me... <clears throat> What do you think about, like, one of the most iconic or memorable national championship games I can think of was after the 2005 season where you had Texas and Vince Young playing in the Rose Bowl against um, USC, Matt Leinart, um, Reggie Bush. You know, those big moments, to me, are what kind of are, – are, they, 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 stand, they stand the test of time, you know, 
and we all love to be entertained. So what would you say about, about folks who are for, you know, this format of the National Championship in terms of, um, you know, being able to see college football's two best teams? It may not be necessarily a rivalry, but you're seeing, you, you should see the two best teams in college football play. What would you say um, about that? Yeah, well, that's the BCS, right? That's the, that's what made the BCS great is that almost exclusively it was it, it, it did its job, and I know the one time it didn't was when Auburn was left out in two thousand four, and as an Auburn grad, it sucked. But I that that was the one instance. So to me, like the Vince Young moment. Those things matter. The Maurice Claret run back in 2002. Those moments in the BCS era were phenomenal because those were the two best teams. And generally speaking, you're probably still going to get the two best teams or at least the four best teams, no matter what size the playoff is. But every moment leading up to that, that th- those entire seasons, Vince Young's, consistent run towards the Heisman Trophy. Those were awesome, but those weren't the only awesome things. You know, back in the day, like you had Utah go to the Sugar Bowl. Like that mattered a lot. Those were awesome moments. Those were fantastic college football memories. And it culminated with the BCS championship, which was, you know, right now it's being diluted. The title's being diluted because like I said, you are now only going to focus on the college football playoff, but not the moments that got you there or didn't get you there. And that's a shame. You know, an unintended consequence of the transfer portal, moving up signing day, um, and then NIL has has been, has negatively affected the bowl games to where multiple players are opting out. Do you not feel like with the 12-team college uh, football playoff and – with them moving up the transfer window um, to the month of December, do you not feel like the games will be more competitive because now you have 12 teams that have actual hopes, aspirations, or dreams to go win a national championship? I think the first few rounds will be, um, but when all is said and done, you know, you're going to get some, uh, you're, you're going to see that line of delineation between really good teams and just sort of okay teams and so the first few rounds are going to be a lot better than i think the the semifinals that's just generally speaking how how things have operated you know so yeah you're going to get good games but i think you're still going to run into the same problem if the early uh, transfer portal window still exists you're going to get malik murphy situations right where the backup quarterback at texas who was one snap away potentially of of playing a major role in the college football playoff, he had to bail because there was no other shot for him like, to go anywhere else. Like that was the time where he had to have. So you're going to have a lot of players bail on teams that are in the playoff. And that's, again, that's, that's a problem too, but you're definitely going to get more competitive games, uh, especially early in the 12 team playoff format. Um, it's going to render the bowls not as exciting um, because there will be a lot of, a lot more players, you know, opting out because, they don't care because they're not making the playoff, which I can, again, I, that sucks too. But, um, you know, I, I guess it, it just goes, I, I guess it's just different strokes for different folks, right? Yeah. Um, I care more about competitive games in mid-October, and I care about what matters in mid-October just as much as I do in late December, early January, because that's, again, that's the foundation that made the sport great. The, the playoff right now is, is not making the sport better. And I think you can look back at the, the, the start of it in 2014, how it was a national sport. It was not just, it was not regional anymore. And now it's regressed back to being regional because of, of the playoff. I thought college football was much more exciting uh, in the BCS era. And I honestly, I don't see how there would be an argument against that based on the season as a whole. There are moments obviously that matter in the playoff races and that's fine. But to me, it was much healthier in the BCS era and all these problems that have, you know, sort of arise now are, I think in part due to the expanded playoff and changes that it has brought with it. Uh, last thing, Barry, and uh, probably about 30 seconds. Or so uh, Dale McGee looks like he's headed to Georgia. Is that a good move for him? I mean, with everything going on with college football and NIL, uh, you want to be a head coach, but at Georgia state right now, 
I, look, I think Georgia State's a good job. I think Del McGee at Georgia State's a home run for him and a home run for them. Sure. I think for Georgia State, getting a guy that's aggressive on the recruiting trail that can sell on the NIL front in the state of in the city of of, of Atlanta is huge. Uh, is it going to make Georgia State, you know, a national power in the Group of Five? Maybe. I think he's certainly capable of doing that. So I think it's a great hire for Georgia State, and I think for Del McGee, it's a good foundation for him to to sort of set the tone in what I think will be a a pretty successful head coaching career. Good stuff as always, Barry. We're gonna have to have another conversation about this one, man. <laughs> Woo! Covered, smothered, and covered. Uh, you're on Sirius XM uh, Radio as well, uh, Barry. How can people follow you and follow your work? Yeah, you can uh, follow me on the social accounts at Barrett Salee and then subscribe to uh, to Smothered and Covered on YouTube, Rumble, and then Apple Podcasts, Spotify, you know, everywhere else. Google Podcasts, Amazon, all those outlets. I'll be there. 